let's start from introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Askar. Uh, I am a co-founder at the VEX School. Uh, at the same time, I'm a, a software engineer at Apple. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adina. Uh, I'm responsible for the soft skills classes at the VEX School, uh, also a co-founder. And I am a senior uh, as that at a company called Cooler Screens here in Chicago. Awesome. So again, guys, as mentioned earlier, this is an advanced programming bootcamp uh, designed for people who have basic Java or basic programming uh, knowledges. So um, if you don't have any coding experience, this is not the right course for you. Again, we suggest you to sign up for the SDET course or UX UI course. So what will be covered? Um, this is like continuous improvement, right? The little history about this course is that uh, software development industry is such a big industry where uh, it is basically a industry of continuous improvement. If you want to stay competitive in the market, if you want to be in demand, uh, you have to make sure that you are always improving because um, Technologies evolve uh, very fast um, and big traditional universities programs, they don't, they cannot really keep up with the technology um, development. So this is, this specific course is a perfect course for people who are eager to continuously improve and learn more and just uh, get better and learn the uh, current on-demand technologies and get the current on-demand um, knowledge from the industry experts. So um, this course is about software development courses. Uh, this is again, a perfect course for someone who is uh, in QA industry uh, on, QA department working as automation engineers or uh, for people who are junior developers uh, who would like to become better developers and uh, or for QAs who are willing to make the jump from QA to development uh, positions. Um, and a little background about developers is that, you know, uh, developers are the core of any uh, technology where people, developers are responsible for creating the system. Obviously, all of these um, positions, all of the specialists are as important, but developers are the core of the whole software development process. Technologies you will learn in dev. Um, so in the dev course, in the advanced programming course. Um, this is again for people who have basic programming knowledge. We will, uh, the course consists of three units. The unit one will be uh, advanced Java. So, uh, we this is again mainly some of our students will be our graduates from our beginner courses who are graduating from the SDET course and they have oracle certified associate level java meaning uh, they know uh, basic programming principles like uh, objects classes polymorphism uh, exceptions they know basic data structures they know what are methods, the differences between static and instance uh, methods. So those are all basic knowledges that you gain from the beginner course that we offer also. Uh, but here, uh, this course is unique uh, in the market in a way that um, we are actually working on uh, building uh, and teaching more advanced uh, stuff. So you actually can become an expert because all of the boot camps out there, uh, they actually specialize in the beginner courses. And this is 
this course is created upon the request of our graduates who graduated from the SDET course, learned the basic Java, and then they have been working in the industry as software uh, development engineers in test. And they are basically coming back, okay, you know, I know that there are so much more I can learn and I would like to become an expert in the uh, development. Uh, why won't you guys uh, offer some short courses that would not start from the beginning? Because I have done my um, analysis research on online and looked at a lot of boot camps and everyone is basically offering uh, beginner courses. And the problem is that is if you have a knowledge and if you go to uh, boot camps that are offering beginner courses is that you are basically repeating all the stuff and by the end by the end, by the time the boot camp ends uh, basically you have to finish early in 6 months let's say and then in 6 months there is only a little that you can learn so you end up on the same position that you are currently um, that your knowledge that that your current knowledge is at so the first unit, the first weeks, you will start learning advanced Java uh, concepts like generics, lambdas, uh, streams, Java input output. So when you are learning Java input output stuff, uh, you are learning how the the whole under the hood uh, technologies of and structures of Java input output, how it's actually built, how can you build your own input output uh, programs. Uh, sockets, uh, again, you will be learning how to build applications, uh, little programs that can actually communicate between two different servers. So you build a chatting application and you will have two instances of the application and uh, your program should be, you should be able to build programs that you, two different computers can interact with. This is a big concept um, and there is serialization, reflection, uh, API annotations, and obviously uh, concurrent applications like multi-trading. So again, it is very important uh, topics. These are again uh, core Java, advanced Java, and with um, real world examples. Very important stuff. Uh, secondly, the second unit is uh, project build building unit. So you would have three days a week classes uh, where you are only working. There is a project that we have pre designed, our instructors have done a great job on uh, designing the project. So basically we have the whole uh, process flow, um, what you would be building and uh, you would be working on a project, microservices project. So, um, and the core of the project is built with Spring Framework. And for those who do not know what Spring Framework is, it is, a, it is the, uh, market's most popular um, project building Java framework is uh, it is Spring Framework. So most popular of, of its kind framework is used to develop web applications, REST API, API micros, uh, micro web services uh, practiced on real projects which are added to the student's development portfolio by the successful completion of the course. Um, it is very uh, wide topic uh, which will teach you how to build again web applications web services rest apis and uh, the all applications will definitely be interacting with databases so now spring framework has a flavor such as hibernate uh, which is basically um, a library spring library that uh, helps you do better uh, map, map, that database mapping. So you would learn how to build projects and use the uh, you know, best libraries, frameworks to um, map on database uh, information with your application. And then uh, REST API stuff is the whole project 
that we are talking about is like a very big project um, would be built uh, on microservices. So if you go to job markets uh, like Dice or LinkedIn or just Google for software development jobs, uh, you will, uh, or Java software development jobs or software development jobs in general, you will see that 90% of the um, job responsibilities mentioned about microservices because these days my, uh, microservices are uh, on demand uh, and you actually would have to have a very clear uh, knowledge of how to, how to design microservices, what they are, how do you develop them, and it is all covered in their projects. And unit three is uh, the last unit three covers that uh, DevOps stuff. So what it is, what is it? Um, you know, most universities, a lot of boot camps, they do teach you how to build programs, but uh, in real world, in the real uh, jobs that we work at, you know, building projects is just the beginning right there is always a process of deployment so you need to know the tools that are currently in demand on the market that um, help you you know install applications to different environments dev environment qa environment uh, production right and so we this is AWS, Jenkins, Docker, and GitLab will be our tool stack for setting up our deployment pipelines from environment to environment. And we will be creating uh, Dockerized containers, Docker containers for achieving that. Okay. So all of this information is also available on our website. So if you guys want to recap on all the tools and learn more, go, go to devxschool.com and under the software development course for months, you will see all this information. Yep. So a uh, little overview of the project that uh, I mentioned that we will be building throughout the course is gonna be, a, there will be a web client. So you would start from, uh, building a project with web client where uh, you know clients can actually go to website and see your applications and the, the front end the uh, client facing part of the project will be built using html css and javascript react uh, again we are not uh, this course is not meant to uh, train you know full stack developers rather we are uh, you know focusing on just the backend uh, software developers but still you would get some kind of uh, ui knowledge there so you would be building uh, micro micro web services so uh, imagine a project where um, there are multiple applications and each application is responsible for certain tasks. So there would be an application who, which is responsible for just user creation, deletion, updating, um, and registering and user authentication uh, web service. There would be an application which handles all the orders from the customers. There is an application which handles um, user registration or uh, the whole user management so each those are all separate applications which need to somehow which need to be interacted somehow which need to be connected somehow and uh, that's the industry industry standards these days uh, and all that you would be getting in this course okay so Obviously, uh, you will learn uh, my uh, database interactions and database mapping, and we, we will be using structured uh, query languages like MySQL, 
and all of the microservices will, will have some kind of interaction with the database. So in order to build it, uh, you, you will definitely use the, um, new, the knowledge that you gain from the unit one. Uh, with advanced Java, you would be implementing uh, concurrent uh, processes using multi-threading. You would definitely be using Lambda streams for uh, going through or iterating through your uh, collections and uh, definitely be using a lot of annotations. Uh, Spring Framework, the whole, all of these three API, uh, all microservices would be built using Spring Framework. Um, interaction between the database and the applications will be done using SQL and Hibernate Framework. And you will learn, um, if you don't know already, obviously uh, most of the, um, you have to share, you will be working in groups and uh, you have to share the applications, your work and other, your teammates work, just like in the industry, uh, there is a tool for um, code sharing, right? Um, source management tool so git you will learn git and github to do that that stuff and there will be a part of the application which let's say you are building an application for order management um there there is a, there is the client side there is the business owner side so there will be user management as well which means um there should be a business owner that is controlling the whole what what are the inventories what do, what should be sold on our website uh, do we have we how do we add new products for the clients so you would have this different uh, user users you will have use uh, regular customers and then you will have a business owner users which can which will have more authority in your application to add new products to delete remove products from the website and these kind of things. So yeah, um, your website will have two different user um, privileges. And how do we go, by, go about um, deployments is again, DevOps, right? Uh, a lot of these things are done by DevOps engineers in big tech companies, but still uh, it is the knowledge you need to have to be, you know, able to, if, you, if your goal is to actually become better a developer or programmer, or maybe you are planning to work on a project and actually uh, get it to production, then definitely this is the knowledge you need to, to have the knowledge from uh, zero until uh, finish uh, process. So um, we will set up Jenkins pipelines, uh, which will you know, be an automated process of deployments. So imagine you have a, an application version, which is going from development to a QA environment for uh, testing, and you don't have to go manually uh, do all this uh, deployment. Rather, we will set up one pipeline job, which would um, help you with just with one click automate that process. So uh, we will set up, get AWS EC2 machines. So uh, we will buy servers from AWS and we will set up uh, containers for, to run our applications. Um, now this, is, this was the project building uh, classes, which will be taught by one instructor three days a week. And um, now the, we are designing this course to give you enough knowledge 
uh, enough experience to actually go out there and crush any uh, interviews, right? And in the real job market for software developers, uh, it is a misconception by a lot of people who are new to tech or don't know much about tech is that um, these days a uh, good, the best developer or best software engineers are not the people who are able to code and who are like great coders, right? Who uh, now these days you have to have, um, you need to know a lot of things like uh, data structures and algorithms. So many software engineers find Google coding challenges extremely difficult. So this is the article um, we found online. And these are the feedbacks from uh, actual engineers who actually went to um, interviews to these big tech companies. And in fact, it is, uh, I myself went, uh, went through, uh, I don't know, 10 hours long interviews uh, in Apple and definitely there are a lot of a lot of coding challenges and the coding challenges are twice or three times as difficult as it would be to for an interview in the Chase Bank. So upon completion of this course, getting a job in Chase Bank shouldn't be should be very easy for you. But we really want to focus on you that if once you get an interview on one of these big tech companies that you actually are prepared to and feel confident about your coding skills, data structures and algorithm skills to crush these interviews. Yep. So our course is designed specifically for prepare you guys uh, to land a job at big tech companies uh, such as Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple. And we also have one of the advantages is our instructors. Yep. So um, Oscar have been, has been through this process with the Apple. We have instructors who have been working in the Microsoft and Amazon and Google as well. So all of this is applicable. And uh, what we decided to do different from other boot camps and or other any courses, we decided to implement these classes so that you have a practice from week one. Um, every week, you will be practicing and actually preparing yourself how to pass an interview for these big tech companies. Yep, yep. And um, if you think that if I learn basic programming, if I learn uh, just how to build a project and I will be able to get a, a job in big tech companies, no, that's, uh, I can assure you that that's not enough. Um, there are so many people who are, uh, willing to or who are dreaming about joining these companies so there is definitely a big competition and you have to be brilliant you have you have to your knowledge on these topics must be sharp and you would be getting a lot of trainings on these um, topics so what you would be learning in data structures and algorithms just a few examples um, obviously there are some more so complexity analysis. So uh, when you go to big tech company interviews, they give you a problem and then you solve it. And that's not enough, right? Just having a solution is not enough. What they are looking for is that they are looking for the best possible solution. So once you are given a coding challenge, uh, you there are multiple ways of solving the challenge there is a way of solving the problem with you know which takes too long to solve right when you run the program it maybe takes a you know 30 seconds and for big companies because they have billions of users worldwide and that's like unacceptable they cannot uh, have an application that processes and takes too long so they are always expect, uh, expecting you to go over the complexity analysis. How long does your solution take to solve this problem? And they always have the numbers. Okay, their solution should, their program shouldn't take more than one millisecond. 
couple milliseconds. So definitely there is that analysis you have to go over. Logarithms, and uh, you will learn about different graphs, uh, di different trees, like breadth first search, uh, depth first search. And there are a lot of uh, interview questions, coding challenges that will actually require you building these uh, trees. And because that would be the most efficient way of solving the problem. And uh, we have an instructor who will be teaching data structures and algorithms once a week for the whole four months. So you have about 16 classes on these topics. And um, he, he has prior teaching experience. It will be the fifth time he is teaching these uh, topics. So now he gained a lot of teaching experience. Um, we will introduce him uh, shortly. And um, the second non-project building aspect of uh, interviews. Again, uh, the work school is a boot camp, which of all our courses are uh, job oriented. So for us, our success is not very contrary to universities, right? Uh, what happens is in universities, if you, uh, read their stats, they will say that, okay, we, ha we have had um, thousands of graduates, okay? Uh, versus our stats are, we have graduated 240 students and we have placed 200 of them. So we all, always have to put this, how many out of our, how many percent of our graduates did we actually place to their jobs? For us, success is that our students actually get their jobs. Uh, we are not here to uh, purely give you the knowledge. Um, we are here for you to, to help you to get your uh, dream jobs. So second part of non-project building uh, knowledge that you have to have to get jobs at big tech companies is very good system design uh, knowledge. So uh, when I went to Amazon for an interview or in Apple, right? These interviews, or in both of these interviews, I had questions like, okay, you know Uber, right? Okay, I know. Now tell me, what do you think uh, their system architecture looks look like? Just design me. They give you a whiteboard and they tell you, design me this uh, Uber, or they tell you design me uh, Netflix. So, and there are so much stuff that you have to uh, take uh, consider, consideration of, and that all those knowledges will be covered in the system design classes. You would be learning about different storage types. Uh, you will learn about caching, hashing. You will learn about fault tolerance uh, system designs. So what like to tell you briefly about fault tolerance is that imagine you have an application like Amazon and it is running and imagine it is running on one server somewhere and that server, uh, wherever that uh, server data center is, let's say there is a natural, natural disaster. So the, serve, the whole data center is gone. So it means Amazon goes down, right? You go to amazon.com and it's not available. And in one minute, every single minute, there are hundreds, thousands of customers actually visiting amazon.com and amazon.com cannot uh, afford to go down not be online or be live for even a minute because one because amazon is such a big company if it's not live for just one second 100 people will see it and then it makes, makes a big news which will uh, ruin amazon's reputation so they have to be very creative uh, they need to use so many different approaches to make sure that even though the 
there is a disaster on the data center, my Amazon.com stays up and live somehow. So fault tolerance and later election will be a topic that will cover how do you solve this problem? What are the industry standards to um, be fault tolerant? So you are always live. You are never going down in production. So just to give you an uh, overview, this will be system design. On system design, you would be doing uh, something like this. You would be actually drawing systems. Okay, information starts from here. From here, it goes to, let's say, service discovery, authentication service, group management, user profile, depending what the uh, user is trying to do. So it is a whiteboard challenge, right, on the interview? Yep. Yep, definitely. So in the real interviews, data structures, there, there will be questions, probably if you go to Google or Microsoft or any big tech companies, there will be a couple uh, interviews. So when you go to face-to-face -face interviews into big tech companies, you have a technical phone call for 30 minutes. And if you do well there, uh, they call you on-site or these days it's online. And it is basically one day about six hours interview where you will meet about 20 people or 15 people uh, every uh, in one interview there will be two people each of them will take about one hour and um, out of 10 people i would say three people will give you whiteboard questions one person will be a manager and then uh, one person will definitely give you a whiteboard question. Again, now that whiteboard question is on system design. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you will get uh, the knowledge for building real world projects. Again, this is a pre-designed project. Our approach is that our instructors have pre-built these projects beforehand so it's not something your instructor and you guys will be building on the spot rather it's something that we have built um, beforehand and we will just go through what we have pre-built and you guys will be building though so we have something to look at always and the project will be what is the project topic what is the project about it is going to be a project like grab hub basically uh, order management. You have a website, uh, you have different um, items that you can order and the user gets notified about it. So you can register, you can create different accounts, you can create products, uh, there will be user, there will be manager. So it is something similar to GrabHub, but obviously it's not going to be even close to GrabHub, right? Because um, it just takes too long to build a GrabHub, real GrabHub. But we only have four months. We will uh, create our MVP, minimum viable product, that should uh, give us a clear idea about the whole software development. Okay. So job offer skills. Uh, my favorite part. So we are talking about soft skills. As you guys know, thank you. As you guys know, um, to be a software engineer or to work uh, in any position in the software development, nowadays um, companies require not only the technical part, but soft skills as well. So one of the differences is that universities do not offer is a training on the soft skills. Um, at the work school, we take a huge accent part on the soft skills. For us, as Oscar said earlier, we measure our success by the graduates who actually land the job. So it is a big achievement for us. And from day one, we train people how to pass an interview and we implemented the soft skills classes. Um, so what are the soft skills? In general, if you ask just in general, what are the soft skills? It's all about the communication, uh, leadership, how to talk to people, how to present, how to make 
your poem, uh, your point, your statement at the job. Um, when it comes for the software development, it is all about for us how to pass an interview. So we prepare you guys from day one how to explain in a simple language what you have done technically. So basically, it is a ability to explain the technical part in simple English to other people. Because in the companies, you will have not only developers around you, you will have non-technical people, such as it can be managers as well, product owners, stakeholders, uh, CEOs, and so on. So, so in our soft skills classes, we prepare, we help you to prepare and build the resume. Uh, we go over the interview process. So from day one, you will be trained on the questions that you might have on the interview. It's also include the behavioral questions. Uh, you will be learning how to present your stuff, how to work within the team. So that's why we have the group project because you will be working together with your classmates and your peers. And for the four months, of studying, you will have this experience on how to work together with the team, how to explain what you're doing, uh, how to help each other. A lot of companies also have the such thing as a pair programming, which is you work with your peer together on one problem solving together. Um, we also have it in our school. So from day one, you will be trained to do so. Yeah. Then we have um, real world simulation. So again, the difference between universities and uh, other courses here, when you come to school, to direct school, you will have this interaction and you will have this real life project. And in the soft skills classes, you will be um, going over the projects, trying to present your project, discussing it, seeing how you can present it on the interview how you can talk about your experience building this project on the interview. And uh, again, from day one, you will be trained on the behavioral questions, which is a huge part. Um, so I wanna ask Askar about the Apple behavioral questions. Um, was it something difficult for you and how much of behavioral questions like was important? Was it more important or less important than the technical questions? Um, it was... It's an unexpected question, <laughs> but um, I, on Apple, I would say uh, 50 or 60% of the interviews were technical. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to speak to two managers, mm -hmm. uh, hire managers or your managers, hiring managers. So um, the, these questions are, they don't have right or wrong answers, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there are good and bad answers. Mm -hmm. So some questions like, tell me about a time when you did something that will tell me that, okay, this candidate is actually a team player. Mm -hmm. Now you have to give an answer, which will actually, you know, be uh, taken, considered as a great answer. Right. So how do you answer these questions? Um, so for this, I would say first thing, uh, again, we teach this at classes. That's why we um, do this training from day one, uh, because we want to show you as many questions as possible that are out there in the market. For this question, first thing, the most difficult part is to actually hear and listen what the interviewer is trying to ask. The question can be completely different, but what person is asking he or she is trying to ask, are you a team player? So you need to hit a keyword. You need to explain a situation where you were showing your team playing skills. Yep, yep. So all this will be covered in the soft skills. Mm -hmm. uh, soft skills are, um, again, something that makes us different. And because we give soft skills so much emphasis and we know how, we know the value of soft skills in a professional work. Okay, so um, let's take like three, five minutes break. Okay. And then uh, we will introduce you guys, our uh, instructors team. Yep. Okay.
and do the Q&A. And we will do the Q&A, yep. Okay, guys, um, all our instructors are here. Um, now we will introduce our team. So who will be in the development team? First, um, Manoj. Um, he is a backend development instructor. Manoj will be uh, taking over three classes a week, uh, teaching advanced Java, Spring, and Hibernate. Hi, Manoj. Hi, everyone, and welcome to DevX School, everyone. So, um, can you introduce yourself? Uh, how long have you been in the industry? What is your teaching experience and what are you looking forward to teach? Yeah, uh, so I'm one of the instructor, instructors here. Uh, so I've, I've been primarily involved in uh, more of a full stack engineer. I've been in the industry for the last uh, uh, seven years almost now. And then uh, it, it's primarily working with startups and uh, some of the like in the industry, like healthcare and uh, com communications, as well as uh, right now I'm on media platform. So um, yeah, it's been a, a wonderful journey. So during this uh, process, I've been um, teaching a lot of uh, people like one-on-one -on -one as well. Uh, I, I like teaching and uh, whatever knowledge that I have, I enjoy sharing my knowledge as well. So. Yeah, so I'm looking forward uh, to this uh, to this class, and um, yeah, hopefully I can uh, give most of my knowledge uh, based on what I have learned from the industry, as well as uh, like in terms of uh, basic advanced Java. Also, like whatever knowledge I have, I, I would like to share with the team, and 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 it's one of my passions. So yeah, I'm looking forward awesome. to this. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, definitely. Um, Manoj, you are very experienced and knowledgeable. So can you, you know, since you will be teaching them uh, going through building the project uh, in this course, can you touch upon a little bit on the project itself, what the project is about? And um, yeah. So uh, basically what we have outlined so far, uh, with Rudrani and Oscar and me and everyone of us. Uh, so we have a order management system that is actually built in a Spring Boot app, which is backed up by a MySQL database. And uh, the front end that we're looking to uh, use to, to uh, interact with the back end is based on React and Redux. So basically we have divided the application into three different microservices which is a user service. And then we have a product management service and a order management service. So basically uh, during the course, we'll be teaching how the user service is uh, built. What are the different aspects of the Spring framework? Um, how the, the interaction with the front end works and everything. And, um, and basically the class is probably going, going to be divided into two different sections, which will be building individual uh, microservices. So one team will focus on a product management service and the other team will focus on order management service, right? So, so it, it pro provides an opportunity to coordinate uh, cross teams like, like in the real world and right. all the uh, items in, uh, in the project is basically built in a way that is actually done on a production and environment right so we have, we have tried to mimic as much as possible so that's that's the outline of the project and hopefully uh, everyone is going to enjoy doing this and and uh, get a lot of knowledge how things are done in the industry based on um based on the spring framework and react and redux which is pretty popular in the market right now so uh, yeah yeah, that's what is the basic outline of the project right now and, and the class, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So um, there will be one microservice that you would be building during the class with the students going over how it's done. And then there are two other microservices that students have to build themselves. Yes. And that way they get their real world 
practice. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Manoj. Um, we are excited to have you and um, students are definitely be gaining a lot of knowledge from you. Thank you. Okay, so um, Rudrani is our instructor for system design classes once a week uh, for four months. And again, system design, as we mentioned earlier, is the very, very important aspect of passing an interview. And so, hi, Rudrani. Hi. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Awesome. Can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have around like four years of experience now in software development. I worked with Expedia as a full, full stack engineer for like three years. And right now I'm working with Microsoft uh, as, a, as a mostly as a backend engineer, but I see it has been mentioned as full stack engineer. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do like I deal with um, UX layer on and off. So it's, it's more heavily on the backend side. Awesome. So uh, do you have any teaching experience and um, what makes you join the VEX team to be teaching? Yeah, I started teaching uh, around like five months back now. So uh, mostly I've been teaching um, other engineers uh, topics such as data structures and algorithms and a little bit of system design. And I think I chose to, uh, like what, what interested me with DevEx is that the curriculum was really uh, comprehensive and every uh, like minute detail was being covered in the curriculum that will be delivered to students. So that is a wonderful thing. And then a hands-on uh, capstone project, which will be like very, very similar to what industry standards are. So that is something very good. Um, so that, that is something what actually interested me to work with you guys. And definitely like the pool of instructors, there are a bunch of talented people. So that's really good. Awesome, awesome. And uh, lastly, um, can you, from your own experience, since uh, you are in Microsoft, can you tell us uh, what is the value of the system design knowledge for, for actually getting a job in big tech companies? Sure. Um, so what I can tell from my experiences and obviously like from what I have, uh, you know, come to know from my friends also, and, and other engineers. So every like uh, good tech company, they have a separate round which is dedicated to system design. And through this, they want to basically evaluate the candidate on how good uh, they are on uh, solving the real world problems. Because when you, when you solve a, a data structure algorithm question, you're not really thinking about uh, how will the application work or how will your code work at scale. And when we talk about at scale, we are talking about like billions of users, right? So, and when we, when we talk about billions of users, it means that any application would be running in multiple regions and would be running on multiple servers. So everything has to be available, as you mentioned in the introduction as well, like everything has to be, uh, you, like your application has to be up all the time. You cannot really, uh, you know, and afford to lose even one minute of it because hundred of users, at least hundred users will be affected. So we, we'd be, we're talking about that scale. Um, so that's what companies evaluated. Are you really able to you know, solve the real world problems? Are you familiar with the concepts which are required to design such uh, large applications? And we're talking about concepts like, you know, um, like how, how will you deploy multiple servers? How will you apply the concept of caching? What is the importance of consistent hashing or other types of hashing which will be used here what kind of storage will you be using so all, all those like design principles that that would come into play yeah yep. totally agree awesome uh anything you would like to add for the students um i think yeah this is this is what uh, what we'll be covering like we'll go through all the all the fundamentals of system design and then we will discuss some interview problems which have been discussed in 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 like real interviews and and design some complex uh uh, com uh solve some com complex problems like you know so how will you design youtube how will you design netflix how will you design um say gmail or any email client and and like some more problems around that 
great, great. That sounds very exciting. Thank you, Thank you Rajani. Thanks for joining. Um, extremely excited to join, extremely excited to have you. And definitely uh, it is a great opportunity for students to get the knowledge from, you know, industry experts. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So it makes the development te team uh, of two, Manoj and Rudrani. So we have covered four days a week now. And uh, um, once a week, Igor Strashko um, will be algorithms interview preparation instructor. He has 18 years of experience in the software development process improvement, project management, and leadership of technical skills. So Igor Strashko is currently a software uh, development director, which basically means software development manager. And um, yeah, probably I will leave the rest for yourself to introduce. Otherwise, I can tell it all. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Igor. <laughs> Hi. Hey everyone. So, uh, as Oscar mentioned, uh, uh, Igor Strashkom, uh, I've been in the industry, in the IT industry, uh, in various capacities for the last 18 years. So, you know, I uh, started as uh, you guys are starting really as a developer. And uh, for the first uh, uh, half of my career, about, you know, 10 years or so, I was mostly hands on um, uh, developer in a variety of technologies, um, you know, .NET, Java, and others. But, uh, you know, for the past uh, 10 or so years, I've been mostly in uh, leadership roles across multiple companies. Um, so uh, including my current role as a director of engineering and company called National Restaurant Association. So uh, part of my job, big part of my job is hiring um, uh, and mentoring uh, developers, right? Of all, um, you know, all types of developers, from junior to senior developers, uh, development managers, architects, database developers, and so on. So, you know, uh, uh, developer growth is uh, really part of my job, and it's been uh, a really major part of my job. Uh, you know, my success criteria is really all around bringing the right talent to a company and making sure they have the tools. Um, uh, they need to succeed, right? That's kind of uh, what makes my job, um, you know, easy. So um, as far as this class, um, uh, what I'm going to be teaching, as Oscar mentioned, um, uh, my classes are around kind of two areas. One is uh, good coding practices, right? So one of the advantages of, um, of uh, DevX school is that we don't only teach you how to develop code, but we also want to teach you how to be a good developer as a true software engineer. And the reason for that is, um, you know, that the, the hiring manager look for, you know, software engineers that really understand like good mechanics, they understand what's happening under the hood of the car, right, that they can not only uh, approach the car and see, you know, uh, turn it on, but they really understand how the car works. So that's kind of what we're going to be teaching you um, some of that fundamental knowledge that you're going to need, and that's going to really help you not only pass your interviews. Um, but also become a, uh, you know, advance your career, right? By becoming a good engineer, uh, it's going to make you a more successful coder. Um, and, uh, you know, it's basically going to help you advance your career faster. Um, and uh, so that's one aspect of uh, what I teach in my classes. And the other aspect is really data structures and algorithms, right? So, Again, that really goes into understanding how software engineering works. Um, many companies nowadays work with a lot of data, right? So, you know, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and not only those big names, but a lot of companies that are not really even known uh, companies, they deal with a lot of data. It's just, you know, um, kind of how, where the industry going. So when you deal with a lot of data, things like uh, understanding the algorithm, uh, using the right data structures, is key. And that's what really comes up a lot on the interviews, especially if you're going to a company that uses a lot of data. Like I said, it's pretty much any company out there nowadays. So understanding those is really critical to your success as a software engineer, getting you in the door and making you successful. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to be bringing to the table, my experience and 
uh, hiring, mentoring software engineers. So I'm open to answering any questions around, you know, the process, the, the, the real, um, you know, uh, world experience um, and um, then making you a better coder. Awesome. Excited to have you. Excited, excited, definitely. And um, is this the first time you, you will be teaching? Nope. Second time, I believe, right? Second time? Yeah. Second time for development, but this is going to be the fifth time in total, right? In total, yes. So, yep. That's also, you know, a big plus because now you have experience of teaching and you know um, how yeah. to approach the students. Yeah, absolutely. I've been in, at DevX for what, like, almost two years now or a year and a half. So, yeah, but again, you know, it's not only the experience here, like I said, big part of my job is actually mentoring developers. So teaching has been part of my job for, for many years. So that's great. Yeah. So um, thank you, Igor. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we appreciate the value you bring into the table and uh, our students has been enjoying, have been enjoying the knowledge that you uh, are sharing with them. Excellent. Thank you. So that makes uh, us three. So um, another big principle of the work school is that um, we only, uh, our, all of our instructors are actually full-time uh, employees at some big tech companies, right? And the reason why we are actually deliberately choosing this approach is that, as we mentioned in the beginning, technology grows too fast. And that's the problem. Uh, traditional education, traditional universities are struggling to solve because they lay out a curriculum, they lay out a program, and then laying out a program takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. And then uh, that program gets outdated in just one year and universities do not invest their time and money to update that program. So they are actually teaching something that is already outdated. And versus the, our solution to that problem is that we are we gonna work with uh, instructors who are actually full-time somewhere they are working with the current tools these days and they're going to bring what the best, the hardest topics, news from the industry to the class in the same day, pretty much. So, and as just Igor mentioned, Igor is a, uh, you know, current employee, current manager, and he's actually knows that he's giving, getting, hiring employees and you would be getting like what, what are the questions that current hiring managers actually ask? So the last member of the team is Askar. Askar is going to be a soft skills mentor, um, backend software developer at Apple right now. And you have about two years of teaching experience at DevX, yep. but more right about in general. in general yep you've been mentoring and teaching others yep. so introduce yourself one more time please yep so um i've been working at apple for um last year and um in general um teaching has become my passion uh i did graduate from a boot camp myself uh, went to a university and then uh in my, on my second year of college, I started looking for internships and um, I failed so many interviews. I was begging after every single interview, I was begging them for to take me for free internships. No one would even give me a free job. Uh, so then I found that something is missing. I'm not doing right, things right. So I started looking for uh, something different. So. Uh, I applied for a bootcamp, coding bootcamp. Uh, since I already had uh, coding knowledge, um, basic knowledge, right? It's university kind of knowledge where they are teaching you Java only, and then they are not never talking about how the system works, how 
uh, the real world works, how, what kind of interviews people ask, how do you prepare your resume? They don't cover system design kind of things. So, um, but I had some coding uh, experience. So all of a sudden I found myself being one of the best students in the class in the coding bootcamp because I had this advantage of background, not because I was smarter, but just because of the experience. And then, so a lot of people started approaching me uh, for help and I started helping and I understood that helping is actually great because I'm learning a lot and, you know, I am uh, sharpening, sharpening up my delivery skills. How do I explain stuff? And then the same explanation uh, techniques helped me to get uh, good jobs after I graduated. So we opened the VEC school two years ago with Adina and I'm responsible for technical aspects. Adina is responsible for soft skills aspects of it. So um, in this course, I will be attending uh, some classes to share soft skills. Uh, let's say, how do you handle questions like, tell me about the biggest challenge you have faced in your career. Tell me about your proudest accomplishment. Uh, and uh, we'll share the questions that we have gotten from uh, Apple, Amazon, and etc. So these are uh, very important skills, very important knowledge. Uh, and I would be very happy to share this knowledge with you guys. Awesome. So that makes us four. Uh, this is the full team, four months course, and um, very excited about the team. Thank you guys for uh, joining, Igor, Rudrani, Manoj. Um, if you would like to stick around, feel free to stick around, um, but you can take your weekend back. Okay, thank Bye. you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. schedule is gonna be. You wanna talk about the sure. schedule? Sure. Yep. The schedule is uh, Tuesday to Thursday. We have evening classes. It will be 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we have Monday and Friday off. So um, it's very convenient for everyone around. As we mentioned, our instructors are working full time. So um, they are teaching on the evening classes, as well as uh, all of our students in the previous batch for the development course were also full time working somewhere as a QA engineers or as that's. Uh, then we have Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, we will have classes from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. Central Time. Yeah. Yep. So again, five days a week classes, uh, and each class is three hours long. Mm -hmm. um, what do we offer uh, as part of the course is uh, we have our learning management system, uh, our own platform, in-house platform, where you will have access to all of our um, content, presentations, um, notes, interview questions, it will be available for you uh, and for as long as you are in the course. And uh, all classes are online, right? We don't have in on-campus uh, courses anymore due to COVID uh, for the time being. And all of our classes are live, so they are recorded you will be uh, basically joining Zoom uh, meetings just like this one. But one difference is that it will be interactive. We encourage students to have so much interaction with instructors. So you are asking a lot of questions. We, our instructors are encouraged to ask questions from you. So instructors are, and students are on the same page as far as the progress. And all of the recordings from the classes are uploaded to our same learning management system that you will have access to 24 seven. And you can basically rewatch it. Uh, if you missed some part of the class or you missed a class one day and then you want to catch up, you can definitely rewatch it. 
uh, the next day. Tuition wise? Yep, so um, tuition, we have two payment options. The first one is pay in full. So if you pay in one installment, you will get the 20% of the full tuition. So it comes in total tuition if is $5,000. So you will be paying 4,000, what's that? After price? trial. Yeah, after trial, uh, you will be paying the uh, discounted price. And the second one is pay as you go. So the full amount of 5,000 is divided by four installments. So every month for the first day of the month, after the free trial as well, yep. you will be paying uh, 1,250. Yep. So how long is the free trial? Seven, two weeks. 10 days. 10 days. Yep. yep. So sorry, we have different for every course. So this is uh, 10 days free trial. We don't get any information from you. Uh, you join the classes. Why we do that is because we want you to see how the classes go. You want you to meet instructors to understand how the soft skills, project days, how does all the classes go. And after the 10 days, you can actually um uh, kind of decide do you want to stick around or not and after the 10 days then we take all the information and we proceed with the payments yep yep so you should definitely sign up for the free uh trial even though you don't you are not planning to take this course this time but it will definitely give you a clear understanding of what to expect from the school and what the school is expecting from you Start date is May 7th, so we have about a month uh, before we start, and it's four months. How do you sign up? Uh, you have to go to thewexschool.com and um, enrollment slash enrollment, or there is an apply button, and you will find an enrollment uh, page. So you can fill out, fill out a very small application or... Uh, you can scan this uh, QR code. It will take you to enrollment page and you can fill out the application. That's the first step. And what is next? Our team will contact you by April 20th. And there is, uh, we have to make sure you guys have basic programming knowledge first and see if you are uh eligible for this course if you don't have any programming background uh, we suggest you to sign up for the as that course which is specifically designed for beginners you don't have to have any uh, programming knowledge there okay so do you guys have any questions so far on the content feel free to unmute and ask questions Everything is clear. Okay. How many hours should I study to successfully graduate? So uh, the classes are three hours a day, uh, but we strongly encourage to go uh, and be take extra mile and uh, we usually suggest to practice on top of the additional three hours so it is up to from six and more from six to eight hours daily in order to successfully graduate again you can rewatch the classes uh, the classes are recorded but we strongly recommend not to miss any classes because you have this live interaction with instructors and if you don't understand any something you can stop pause and ask instructor and uh, instructor will take time to explain you in person versus if you rewatch the classes, if you don't understand something, you're kind of missing out. Yep. So um, yeah, it's three hours a day, but uh, on top of that, we ask to practice three hours more. So it's from six to eight hours daily. And you have to remember that it is very shortcut. Um, if you went the traditional way, it would take you four years. Um, and 
internships, internships and then getting the real work experience so it is an extremely shortcut just four months as long as you dedicate it take the full advantage of it then uh, it should uh, give you it should give you an edge compared to all other candidates out there definitely it's a uh, you have to be very competitive and you should have an an edge compared to other competitors okay so it's not recorded videos will you support until i get a job um so classes are not just recorded videos it is live uh we are basically again our concept is that we we want our students to talk to us we want to talk to students that's the i think that's the whole point of these courses uh otherwise there are a lot of recorded videos and i don't find them efficient that much because uh, nobody is really you don't have a chance to share your knowledge now in the web school the biggest asset you are getting is your classmates and uh, you will have groups so you can uh, communicate with uh, each other and share your knowledge and do i get will you support until i get a job uh, if you are switching companies yes definitely you get the support until you get a job uh, with extra mentorings you will have access to our platform okay so if no more questions thank you guys for joining um we are extremely excited about uh this course what uh, the vex is offering uh it is a very unique strong course uh stacked by great instructors uh top company experts managers uh you don't find this stack uh in many places yep thank you so much for joining and if you have any questions feel free to contact us devxschool.com we have all the information there yep thank you guys if you have basic programming knowledge or you are a QA engineer and want to land a software development job at companies like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, then DevX School 4 months advanced programming bootcamp is what you need. First, you will learn advanced programming concepts like reflection API multi-threading, complex algorithms like depth first search, bubble sort to name a few, build microservices projects with Spring Framework. Second, you will be trained to crack any coding, system design, behavioral interviews by technical deep dive sessions from software development managers. Our dedicated market prep team will guide you through preparation strategy, resume tips, common mistakes, must know tips and offer negotiations. Fast track your career and double your income. This course is specifically designed to help you Join these big tech companies. Visit devexschool.com to schedule your call and learn how to apply.